Hello, I'm Sol from the first cohort. Welcome to the making of Icarus. So the idea is that we'll produce a release stream for the beta weekend. So we'll try and pack everything we need into that release stream with everything ready for the 28th of August. The idea is to take that first 20-ish level content that's in there now and spread it over a bunch of weekends and focus it in on different stuff. So we can say, right, when we open this bit, what is the response to that? How are people enjoying this part of the content? With the aim being to reduce, particularly beta fatigue, how are we feeling? Is that gonna work? So for us, the beta process gives us a real chance to test and adjust as we go along and it's really being able to focus on that iteration. So being able to really quickly identify something we wanna change, get it in game, and get feedback on that very quickly. It's been really fun to watch the VODs and the videos of people playing the game, and I think there's just been some real quintessential moments through it. One of them is definitely seeing people's bases burn down. Hast du mit dem Pfeil und dem Bogen den Wolf angezündet? Es kann nicht der Ohren sein. Johnny! Want to get supersonic retro propulsioned in the face? Our concurrency got better and better as we went along. And that was a really good sign, basically, that we were delivering on an experience that people were able to play progressively longer and longer as they went along. And that was a really important, I suppose, milestone for us is to see the concurrency get better and better. Largely, really, the process from now is about adjusting that experience. I think it's easy to underestimate how profound the difference of some of those balance changes can be, whether it's the beer apocalypse one weekend or the wolf apocalypse the next, those really come down to a few parameters changed in our data tables, which is our data store. The focus continues to be adjusting that experience and trying to dial in on the difficulty that provides the knife edge of a maybe slightly frustrating, but really compelling challenge to the players in terms of survival. We've also been playing around earlier than maybe we expected with missions to see what other challenges beyond just survival mechanics that we could throw at the players to help provide them a bit more context. So we're gonna to continue to do that because that's, we think, a, a really long-term compelling factor we can put in to get people back into the world and get them going through the survival process uh, again and again. So we're coming to the close of Icarus in terms of the first round of development approaching launch. Uh, it's a really cool time for us. Uh, as a technical team, you do a lot of upfront work. You kind of build this huge sandbox, huge tool set, get a lot of people to make content in that tool set and all the gremlins start coming out of the woodwork. You get all these um, bugs and stability issues that you weren't ready for. Well, you were definitely anticipating, but you didn't know what they were gonna be. And a lot of the time you do your best job uh, making sure you can cut those off as early as possible, but there's always gonna be ones you don't expect. So what we're doing a lot of in the tech team right now is a lot of hardening, a lot of fixing and making sure the game is nice and stable and we can launch at a quality that we're proud of. We want to make sure that you guys get you know, a, a true AAA experience when playing Icarus. So uh, with AAA comes stability. So a lot of the work that we've been pushing on for these days has been um, you know, core bug fixes, making sure the play experience runs smoothly, uh, avoiding any of our hitching, looking at our existing systems to make them better so that we can expand on them, and also uh, you know, pushing the boundaries a little bit on what content we're able to get into the game. Uh, it's kind of fun to have those unique challenges for the dev team to make sure that not only are we making things safer, but we're also still being creative and putting cool content into Icarus. <laughs> I've got no energy. I've got no stamina. Oh my god. What help does this thing have? Keep shooting it. There it is. Oh, oh my god. Alright, let me cut it up. You want to make it back alive? 
you're gonna have to learn fast. Icarus was an idea that was extruded from the mind of Dean Hall about two years ago and he and I have been collaborating on the law behind it since then. We were both very clear that we wanted to do something serious and we wanted to deliver a narrative that reflected that. A universe with the edges hanging out that reflects the complexities of human interactions in a way that feels real just like the mechanics of the planet, crafting, building, and surviving feel real. The story exists in every item in the universe, from a stick you find lying on the ground, to large-scale quest items that you'll be sent out to retrieve by the corporations and faction groups. Hopefully you will have already seen the No Rescue trailer and get a sense for what we mean by more serious narrative, trying to do things that we don't feel have been done in games before. So just before we were going to release the beta, the country went into full lockdown. It did really throw us for a loop a bit. Definitely introduced a challenging approach to releasing a beta. And it did sometimes make it hard for some of us, myself included, to delineate being at home for fun as well as being at home for work. So we were very mindful to try and avoid a crunch mentality. It's very common. We definitely did spend a lot more time, particularly that first weekend than uh, would otherwise have been healthy. Mainly that was just because we were so excited to see the game out there and people just wanted to see how it was done. So by the second weekend we identified that we really needed to make sure that we were giving the team rest so we actually started that beta weekend with an enforced stand down for some of our team members just to make sure that they were spending a couple of days resting and recharging because for us this really is a marathon not a sprint. So we want to make sure that we're able to get into this really tight iteration every two weeks. People seeing changes coming through that were suggested, bugs being fixed, and us slowly over time addressing what's needed for the 1.0 release.